Well, welcome. I'm uh, an old-time war gamer who, uh, just getting back into the hobby after many decades, <laughs> um, got uh, sidetracked by all the wonderful video games um, and computer games over the years. I used to play a lot of games. This is a. Uh, this is just today. We're going to do a, a unboxing and then maybe a short review of uh, YE1795, which is from Decision Games, and it is in their uh, mini game series. And it comes like this in a little small package. And they have quite a few games in this series. They're designed to play pretty quickly. Uh, you can play them supposedly like in an hour or so and they only have a limited number of pieces and um, let's see what's in here <clears throat> this one the title interests me greatly so I'm gonna go ahead and and do this one first there's a cover sheet which we don't need here's the comes with the pieces comes with a little bag for the pieces comes with some small cards which are the cards used during play, I'm sure. Uh, comes with a back cover, which explains a little bit about the game. Um, says you can play it uh, you can play it solitaire, medium, or it's designed for two players, I believe. Uh, complexity very low. Playing time, an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, it has war bands as the level two players. Um, <coughs> It's in there, it's on the cover here, it says it's their uh, Ancient Games uh, collection system. So, <coughs> in these mini games, they have a number of different, uh, they have a number of different rule sets, and this one is the, the mini game, the uh, Ancient World one. And we have, what else do we have? We have the, probably the rule book, which. They said there were eight rule books were eight pages. This one looks like it's four, which is just fine with me. For a quick game, you don't need a ton of rules. And then this is obviously the map, a very small map, which basically has a very simple design. You've got uh, the main islands, Hawaii, Maui, Molokai, uh, Oahu, and Kauai. Uh, you have some different battle map apparently with different terrains and um, a time marker over here, a terrain key over here, uh, a box for Kamehameha and a box for the Allied Chiefs and a small battle, really small little battle results table and so it's very very simple, very simple map, incredibly simple map and let's take a look at the pieces quickly here um, so it looks like there's just regular pieces. There's a turn marker. Um, oops, turn it right side up. Some of the pieces have numbers on them. Some of them are obviously the chiefs, or the elite, or the leaders, or whatever they're going to call them in the game. And a few extra markers for different things. There's some some ships, of course, we need to be able to move across. Okay, this game was covered. This is the uh, most recent issue of Strategy and Tactics magazine, the September October 2018 issue, and uh, there's an article in here on Hawaii unification, and that's where they introduced this topic, and they have a pretty detailed article on the situation. Basically, the game takes place um, in the where this this gentleman here, when he was younger, uh, King Kamehameha the first was going to unify, was trying to unify the Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands before that time had never been under a single uh, leader, and so there's an article here that talks about that. It uh, goes into some detail on the classical Hawaii situations. Uh, there's a section here on pronunciation. There's a pretty detailed article on it. there's some uh, their weapons during this period of time. Um, uh, this was after the contact with the Europeans. The Hawaiians had purchased some things. They had some a few muskets that they had purchased. Uh, they had a couple of cannon. Uh, Kamehameha, I don't know if it's represented in the game yet because I had read the rules, but Kamehameha actually had a small sloop or something, a, a European ship that he had acquired. But of course the, Europe, the Hawaiians also had their, their sailing canoes, uh, which they could use to sail 
from island to island. And in fact, they travel between the islands and around the islands quite frequently that way. And talks a little bit about like, some of their classical, and then of course they still also use their classical weapons. A lot of them were hand to hand. There's in the article, then there's also a um, uh, shows the major route that Kamehameha's invasion route took. And at the time of the game, the situation was such that uh, Kamehameha had pretty much unified the Big Island of Hawaii, um, which on this map is uh, is down here. And he had that he had put that island pretty much under his rule. And likewise, there was a ruler for Maui and one for Oahu and one for Kauai. And so basically, I believe in this game, it's going to be Kamehameha trying to invade Maui and Oahu and their leaders trying to defend it. What happened in real life is after he had, after Kamehameha had conquered these islands, he was planning to invade Kauai, but the ruler of Kauai uh, made a deal where he promised fealty or whatever you want to call it to Kamehameha and um, in return was made, I would call him a governor, but I don't know what they called him, but anyway, he was still the leader of his island, but he um, followed direction from from Kamehameha. Um, what else can I say about the battles? I don't know. Like I said, there was a before you know they, before in ancient times the Hawaiians <coughs> had multiple chiefs, of course, for every island, and an island like the Big Island would have been divided up into these sections, where each section had people that lived there and you know lived off the land essentially, and the sections were designed such that they included both from the sea coast all the way to the mountain. So in, in mountains, and so they had access to all different elevations for their crops and and things, and they also had access to the coast for fishing and and that sort of thing. So they had everyone, every group had their own ability. Now there were some sections that were on the wetter side of the island, like on the Big Island, it's over on the east side here. It's very in the south is very wet, and up, and, and over here it was dry land. So here's, this was more dry land farming, where like over here they probably farmed more like sweet potato, where over here, where it's wetter, you would farm more taro and that kind of thing, and then they would trade, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> but over time then, in in this time frame we're talking about, the different chiefs had fought among themselves and had eventually, um, you know, pretty much come under one, one, one leader, one ruler. So that's the situation the, the article um, describes. It's got some plots, some graphs. Here's the picture of, this is uh, the statue of Kamehameha the First, which is on the north end of the Big Island today, um, which uh, they have a, there's a King Kamehameha Day, which is celebrated in Hawaii every year. And then there's a little article, a little blurb here, which is where I saw it about this, this game at price fourteen ninety five. And so that's, that's available if, uh, if you get a hold of Strategy and Tactics Magazine and you want more, more detail. Okay, I'm going to pause it here and go in and, and read the rules and see about playing this game. Okay, a quick reading of the rules. I haven't tried to play the game yet, but a quick reading of the rules. Um, I now see a little bit more about this map. So, the game is for control of these colored uh, diamonds, or not di whatever shape these are, <laughs> diamonds, I guess. Um, there's only two places where you can move between land, and that's on the big island of Hawaii, and on the uh, island of Oahu, there's two spaces, and uh, the the turn the turns are um, a month, and so in a month the canoes can pretty much reach anywhere. So um, the the movement is pretty generalized. You can pretty much move when it's your turn, pretty much anywhere. Um, the unit sizes the the uh, warrior units have roughly a thousand men, give or take five hundred. Uh, in each group, um, the uh, canoes would be probably like two to four hundred uh, canoes, and the uh, in the game the canoes can or don't fight, but they could carry um, two of the two of the uh, warrior units and as many of the leader units as you as you want for each canoe. There, uh, the earthworks are these these uh, these are fortifications in, on the Big Island of Hawaii, these two, which makes them a little harder to take, and depending on the cards they draw, the allied chiefs can get uh, earthworks, which they can put 
up, which are essentially the same thing. Some of the units have some bonuses. They're they're uh, some of the units are harder to uh, um, route than others, and give some certain bonuses. But that's pretty much the way the the way the game um, is set up. And to win, um, if you are if you're Kamehameha to win, um, what you have to do is um, at the start of a turn, and the Kamehameha player always goes first, so his opponent would get a chance to come back. If you have, to, if he occupies his his two st starting spaces on the Big Island, and any four of the other Spaces. So pretty much the whole board. The, the kawaii can come in as, depending on the cards, can come in on one side or the other. But you'd have to occupy pretty much, pretty much the rest of the, the island chain um, to win. And the allied chiefs will win if, at the beginning of their part of the turn, they hold at least two of the blue spaces. They have to hold on to at least two of their own spaces they start with, plus they have to take at least one of the green forts on the Big Island of Hawaii, and that's going to be hard to do um, with the combat rules the way they are. So, so they, so, and then you've got, if, if the turns run out, basically, um, it ends in a draw. If, uh, if Kamehameha is, is eliminated, his unit is eliminated, then the, the allied chiefs win immediately, and likewise, if both of the two um, chief units for the allied chiefs uh, are eliminated, then Kamehameha wins immediately. Each turn you draw a card, and the way the game is set up, the, uh, the for each side, the first two turns, they have to draw specific cards. So for Kamehameha's side, on the first turn, he's got his, his card is not a random card, but it's uh, join, the, join the High King. And uh, he gets a pike unit and two warrior units um, Plus his fleet can move. He can move a fleet. And on the second turn, he gets um, Captain Vancouver and the Discovery join, and basically that means he can get the uh, uh, the cannon unit to join his uh, his side, and he gets to move some fleet. So those are his first two moves. And for the High Chiefs, for the Allied Chiefs, I should say, their first turn is join us. They get a Pike unit and two Warrior units. Um, in addition to the units they start with. And on the second turn, they've got foreigners, Captain Brown and the Fair American join them and they get uh, also get they'll, they'll get their own cannon unit. And those are the first two turns. Um, and then after that, the cards are, are random. They draw one card per turn and it has various things on it that can happen, of course. And um, battles are fought the battle takes place, you come over here and you've got beach, inland, cliffs, and if you push the enemy back, if you start at the beach and they're on the inland, if you um, route all their, kill and route all their units, they move to the cliffs and you do another battle, um, and you keep going basically until the until one side or the other wins. And um, like I said, you know, the rules are pretty simple. Um, I'm going to play it a few times and then we'll see uh, if I can if there's any other, um, you know, uh, things to it that make one side or the other uh, make it unbalanced or anything, but um, it, uh, it, it, like I said, it's it's a pretty simple game and it's pretty straightforward. And the, uh, I wish the units were a little bigger. Um, they're they're very they're very tiny little guys. Uh, I wish they were a little bit larger. But with only the one number that really matters on each unit. Um, which is their their combat strength, and and the combat system, their combat strength is really it's it's kind of like the old war at sea, dice at sea, game where it's that's how many dice they get to roll on the uh, battle results table. Um, so it's a, so the combat system is, is very simple, and and <clears throat> you really only have to read the one number anyway, so it doesn't matter if the little figures are hard to see or not, and. Um, and the and the 
the battles take place here, but there's there's unlimited stacking in this game. So you can have stacks as high as you want, and you can move the when the battles take place. You use this area over here um, to kind of keep things straight, so you don't have to worry about trying to move little pieces around on small and small squares or anything. So. Okay, so here we go. We're going to give a start. I've, I played. <laughs> I, I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm probably not playing the best strategy. Um, I played <laughs> one game already, and the Allied Chiefs won on turn three. So obviously, <laughs> I don't know what the best thing to do is. So let's give it a shot. So you start off. I put this, the starting units are on the board, and the turns. The game starts with uh, um, Command Mayor's first turn, and he has the card he has to draw. Says recruit uh, one pike and two warrior units other than the Kauai units. So he gets the pike unit and two warrior units that have two strength. And he gets to put those um, any place where it would be either where he is, which is to start with in Kona, or in any of these spaces. So he has to put them in either Kona or Hilo. So he's going to put uh, one of them in. Hilo to defend there. Actually, I'm going to put the Pike unit in Hilo, and then uh, <coughs> two, uh, their two will go into Kona. Okay, and then he can move uh, one fleet, so he could move two spaces. And on the first turn last game, I had Command Maya took Molokai, which is undefended, um, but that turned out to be a bad idea because then his troops were trapped there, and um, the Allied Chiefs attacked and took uh, Hilo, and he then had a turn to recover from it, but the card he drew, the random card, was Storm, uh, and he couldn't, there was no fleet movement, <laughs> so the game was over. Okay, so now we'll go to the Allied Chiefs card, and their first card, they get one pike and two warrior units, so so far the sides that the teams are very even. So he gets one, uh, he gets a pike unit and two warrior units. So to start, there's a, there's a you can you can do a couple of things here. You can put your units. I'll put one of them on Wahoo there and one there. Okay. So then here's the Pike and the two units they get. We'll put one of the units. We'll put the Pike unit on Maui, and we'll put the other two units here on uh, on Oahu, and they can move uh, uh, two fleet moves. And so they could attack something, but I don't think I'm going to at this point. Um, there'd be too much. Re you know, we have there's too much. Uh, there's, they're too strong. So we'll wait. Okay. So they're not going to move this turn. So now we've got the uh, <coughs> Kamehameha second turn. We'll move the time advance one to February, and he gets the Vancouver unit, which is a cannon unit. The cannon can be used in land and sea battles, it says. Fleet move two. So he's got Vancouver. I'm going to put Vancouver with Kamehameha in Kona. Now this is the point where I took Molokai, and I'm going to not do that. I'm just going to basically pass and not move this time, because I want to make sure I've got enough troops here to defend the big island, because Kamehameha can't lose one of those spaces. And then the uh, High Chief's turn, second turn, is they get the uh, their cannon unit, and they'll put that with the high chief also, at, uh, and they're not going to attack yet either. So we'll go ahead and let the turn run out, and now we're going to go to the third turn. And now we've got the randomness to it. Now <coughs> the random, but at this point you take the two cards you've already got and you shuffle them back in. So now, in the, in the long game, we've got seven turns. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got we've got enough cards that you're gonna you're gonna basically use all the cards. Um, so that might take away in, in the in the long term. It might make the game a little bit um, less replay the value because you you know what's going to happen. It's just not going to be you don't know what order the things are going to happen. On the other hand, there is a, I should mention, there's a shorter game in the rule, <laughs> in the rules where basically you uh, skip the two turns that we just took and jump right to the third turn. Um, because 
I think I think they did that on purpose because quite often the strategy on the first two turns is going to be basically to do nothing unless the opponent does something really um, odd. Okay, so let's see what Kamehameha has on his first turn. He's got, he drew the storm card, which is bad for him. A tropical storm strikes. Um, you have to roll one die for each unit other than leaders. <coughs> on a six, return the unit to the recruit. So basically, on a six, he's going to get to have to discard any unit. And discard after play and fleet move none. So this is a very bad card. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, it's unclear to me on this card if it just applies to Command Man. I'm going to assume it does. And I'm not going to roll for uh, the ally chief. So uh, it wasn't too bad. Command Man lost uh, one, one unit. And I went ahead and rolled for it. says anything other than leaders. So I went ahead and rolled for the canoes. And he lost a canoe also. And this goes now to the discard pile. And then... Um, we'll draw one for the for the. Oh wait, hold it. <laughs> Get ahead of myself. Okay. So now we'll do the uh, Kamehameha's turn movement, and then we'll see if there's any. Problems. I don't think with the with the units that he's lost. I don't think I've got the uh, the manpower to launch an offensive, and just capturing an empty space doesn't really do any good. I have to take them all, so we'd have to uh, attack. So I'm just going to have. Kamehameha sit, and we'll see what the uh, Allied Chiefs do on their turn. The High King wounded. During the first land battle this turn, Kamehameha re warriors receive a minus one to all combat rolls. So apparently this is a good thing for the High Chiefs. Um, Kamehameha is wounded, and uh, it makes it really, really hard for the um, command me is so the first land battle is is uh, they're very but they only have one fleet move so let me let's, let's think about what they want to do we're going to go for we're going to go for broke here um, let's try it and see how the battle goes so it says recruit one unit so the allied chiefs get to recruit one unit and it says a warrior unit it doesn't say it can't be an elite so I'm going to go ahead and recruit an elite unit and then I only get one fleet so we'll take one of the fleets from Oahu. And we'll put um, a leader. We're going to go for broker. We'll put the leader, and we'll put two uh, two land units, the elite unit, and I'm going to say the gunpowder unit. So we're going to send in the, the best of the best here, and we're going to move to Hilo, which is the weaker of the two places. Now, Kamehameha. So this that's, and that's the only movement we'll do. We only get one fleet movement. So that ends that, and now the battle starts. So there's only one battle. And um, <coughs> Kamehameha might have a choice. He, he might be able to intercept at sea. So we're going to roll a 1, 2, or 3. And if he does, if he does that could be very bad for the uh, um, allied troops. He rolls a 4, so he can't intercept at sea. So now we're going to go ahead and set this up as a battle. So we've got... Kamehameha has got two forces, a pike and a regular warrior unit, defending. And the canoes just sit there. They don't apparently have too much to do with the battles. They're just for transport. Um, so here we've got the three units. And this is the way the battle works. First there's a, first we decide who, which, which side has the advantage. And the <coughs> side with the most elite units gets a plus one on their die roll. So the Allied Chiefs get a plus one because they, they have three elite units and Kamehameha has zero. So they get a plus one. So they roll a four, so that's a five, and Kamehameha rolls a two. So the Allied Chiefs, the attackers, have the advantage. That means every battle round they go first. So the first thing that happens is the gunpowder units fire. So the cannon fires first, and it's going to fire on the elite attacking unit side and they rolls a three, that's no effect. So the cannon has fired. And now we go to the normal attack. In this case it would be I'm going to have the uh, the elite warrior unit. He gets to roll three dice on the elite side. So here's the three die he's going to roll. And he's got two of them are sixes, so that's a defender eliminated. So um, 
Kamehameha has to eliminate one of these two units, he's going to take the one that's not not a pike. And so that goes away. Okay. Um, not that the, I really needed the pike now that I think about it, because that's a fort anyway, so the pike doesn't really do anything. Um, it just it prevents you from retreating. So anyway, okay, but either way. Um, so that was a three. He's fired. Now um, Kamehameha fires back. He gets two rolls, and he gets to attack on the non-elite units, and he gets a minus one to his combat roll, which is going to be very bad. He rolls a six and a five, which is a four and a five, and a five is um, Defender Panic. So the Allied Chiefs have to take one of their units and panic it, and I'm going to take the cannon. So the cannon gets flipped over. It's not going to be able to shoot anymore in this round. It's panicked. Okay, and then uh, the only person that hasn't fired yet is the Allied leader. He's got a one die on the elite rep attack unit side. He rolls a three, so that's no effect. Okay, so that's the first round. And so the battle's going to continue, um, except that the cannon is uh, panicked. So now we go with uh, the, the advantage side is the, uh, the Allied Chiefs. They're, they've got a three die, and they roll. And a two, and not a good roll. Two, a two and two threes. So he shot, and nothing happened. Um, he gets the fire back. Kamehameha does with two, and a minus one on the die roll. A four. That's a five, not a five. It's a four. So four and a two. Nothing happens. And then the last person in the round is the allied chief. He gets one on the elite side. He rolls a six. So this unit is eliminated. The Allied Chiefs move inland, there, there's nobody on the cliffs, so they get to move in, and the cannon gets un, um, unflipped, and so the Allied Chiefs now own this. I think this canoe can just go anywhere, so I think it retreats. I'm just going to do that for now. And that's the end of that turn, and now we're going to start a new turn, and things are looking bad for Kamehameha. He has he has to take this unit back because if he, if he, if the if the Allied Chiefs have any two of these and they have three at the moment, and one of these two, which they do, they win the game. So he's got to he's got to take this back on this turn. Now he does have a formidable army, so this may not have been a smart thing to do to attack. But I thought, what the heck, I'll just do it anyway. Um, he's got a formidable army, and he doesn't have to worry about sailing. He can just come across on the land. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and see. Let's see what card he draws. Rally. Kamehameha's force of personality prevents up to two units from pa panicking in any battle this turn. He can recruit a warrior unit. Well, he's going to recruit his elite unit, because it says warrior, and I did that with the other side, so I'm going to do it with Kamehameha. Recruits that. And he gets one fleet move. Um, he doesn't really need a fleet move, because he can attack from land, so he's going to go and what's he going to do? He's going to leave maybe leave one unit in Kona to defend it, and move uh, everybody else to the cliffs. I think so. So we've got a cannon, we've got a warrior, we've got another warrior, we've got an elite warrior, and we've got Kamehameha. And on the other side we have. I'll put them on the inland space. We have a cannon and a chief and an elite warrior. Let's see who has the advantage. Uh, this side has two elite units, this side has three. So uh, we add one to Kamehameha's die roll for advantage. He rolls, unfortunately a one, for him, a one, which is two, and the uh, Allied Chiefs roll a five. So the Allied Chiefs have the advantage. So their cannon fires first on the elite attacking table. They roll a four. That is a retreat. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and it won't apply to any of the elite units. So uh, one of these two warrior units just got panicked, so we'll flip one of them. And then the uh, Command Maus cannon fires back, and he rolls a five, but they're in a fort, so they're not going to panic. So, because um, they're, they're defending Hilo. So there's no effect with that, so he's fired. And he's fired. Okay, now we've got the regular turn. Um, 
the chiefs choose their warrior unit, they're going to roll three dice on the elite tag table, and they roll five, which is a panic. So the other warrior unit here is going to panic. And now it's um, Kamehameha's turn, and he's got a three. He's going to attack. And he got lucky and rolled a six. He really needed that six. So one of the allied units is going to be eliminated. And um, I can't be the chief because they'll lose the game, actually, if it's the chief. Um, and it, I don't want to lose the, the elite unit. So it's going to be the cannon. And unfortunately with the cannon, once you lose it, you can't, uh, you can't recruit it back. So it's gone for the rest of the game. So they just lost their cannon. Okay, so that was the three. He's fired. And now um, the leaders are going to shoot. And he's, this is their the little retinue they have around them. He rolls a five, which is a panic. So um, Kamehameha is under, is panicked. But he's got two units yet that are not panicked. So now we're going to go into round two of the battle. And we've got an even an even match at this point, except um, Hilo is fortified, which really gives the Allied Chiefs an advantage. So let's see how we go here. So we'll start with uh, the Allied Chiefs are going to start with their, their big unit. And they get a bad roll. Nothing happens. The uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. We'll have to th hold on to that, because the, the cannon actually goes first. So the gunpowder unit goes first, and it rolled it once. Nothing happened, and then, and then this, this warrior chief rolled, and it nothing happened, and now um, the allied chief rolls. No, wait, he rolls. He rolls. But no, the actually it's the uh, MMA rolls at this point. Right. He gets a five, which is a panic, but they don't panic because they're not in a they're not in a fort, and because they're in a fort, and then he rolls a four, which is a panic, and so they've got a panic. Their gunpowder unit. Okay, and that's the end of that round. Now we'll come again. They're going to attack with the three. They get a five, which is a panic, and so all of Kamehameha's units have panicked, which means the uh, they've been pushed back to Kona, and in so doing, even though they're not eliminated, they're back in Kona, and with that, the battle is over. The Allied Chiefs have just won. So I've played two games, the Allied Chiefs have won. Now, I've only played two games, and I'm going to reread the rules. There may be some things I'm doing wrong, and some of you are probably going to correct me in the notes. But anyway, um, that's a quick look at this game, and I'm going to end it there. And I, it seems like it's kind of fun, but it may not have a really long um, replay value, which is okay for $15. So it's actually kind of a good deal.